Okay, we're recording. Let me let me just hang on a second with that question. Let me just call this meeting to order. Springfield Historic Commission, Thursday, April fifteenth, twenty twenty one, um, via teleconference. Uh, let me just go through some of the protocols here. The, uh, in order to enable municipal government to continue its important work during the COVID-19 pandemic while assuring both city employees and citizens can satisfy CDC social distancing guidelines, City of Springfield is providing public notice that would conduct a public hearing utilizing remote technology. Uh, copies of said petitions, text, and maps may be requested by email or phone. Email should be directed to the Office of Planning and Economic Development at A. Allen, that's A A L L E N, at SpringfieldCityHall.com, or by calling 413 787 6020 to view the public hearing. It's on Focus Springfield Community TV website. Now, public commentary takes, is taken in two segments. The first public comment period will take place prior to meeting discussion. The second public comment period will take place after the meeting will remain open for 24 hours after the meeting. And to provide for a public comment in writing, the Springfield Store Commission 70 Tapley Street, Springfield, or email a allen at springfieldcityhall.com. And to provide for a public comment by voicemail, 413-750-3223. Uh, Messages received will be played to historic commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. All commenters should state their name, address, and company or organizational affiliation in addition to the items their comments pertain to. Voice messages received 24 hours before the hearing will be put into the record during the public hearing and comments after the meeting will be entered at the continued date for the hearing. Messages are limited to two minutes to request a reasonable accommodation or language service call 413-787-6020. Um, let me just take another look. Right now we have Commissioner Walsh, Commissioner McFarland, Commissioner Finn, uh, Commissioner Schultes. Did I miss anybody? Any other commissioners on board with us? Okay. okay and just for those who have who are new to this, that if you're at the new hearing tonight, we do not vote. We just can to allow for the public commentary to come in and any votes will be taken at the um, May 6th meeting. So um, go ahead, Al Alvin, looks like you're gonna say something. Yeah, I just had a comment. Um, we don't have any um, letters uh, either for or against any of the items on the agenda tonight. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. That will move it forward. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm just was hoping to get one more commissioner on. So I still only have four. Okay. Let's get 176 Florida Street. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness, Hector Rivera, uh, roof mounted solar array. Um, Does the petitioner have anything to add? Um, no, sir. Tony Isaacs again. Um, no, we have no additional information to add. We submitted the most recent plans. Um, they may be able to redesign it again to oh. make some better setbacks for you guys. But as, as far as we go right now, that's the best setbacks that the design team could do with the approved amount of loan that the people can get. With the what? With the approved amount of loan that they they, they received, so they were they received a, a certain amount of funding in order to get right. this project. So in order, right. they what what does the funding have to do with the setbacks? Oh well, well the setbacks may reduce the amount of panels. Um, so they incorporated the best setbacks they could with the same amount of panels. Okay, so do you, do you think that the setbacks fit our guidelines, or they do not fit our guidelines? Um, I I personally think they do. Um, there's one setback that's on one roof that doesn't really make sense to me. My supervisor can't figure it out either, but our design team is in another part of the country. Um, yeah. But other than that, it looks like to, to me, because I haven't done installs before, that all the setbacks yeah. are incorporated. So that way, if there was any issues. It looks like you moved a couple of the panels, which would make those setbacks a little more accurate. I see that. Yes. Sir. And 
uh, it looks like you've highlighted what the setbacks are, so it's a little more clear to us when we look at the at the. Uh, uh, well, if that if there's nothing else to add, um, did the get the commissioners get a chance to look at the the the, the, the newest change? Do you have any questions of the petitioner? All right, here. Is it possible if we could just see the change on the screen? Just, you know, to kind of. Yeah, hold on. Let's see if I can do that one for you here. Well, actually, I only have the newest one. Let me see if I can. Go. If, you, if I, you lose me, I'll call back in. So let me see if I can. Last time I tried to do this, I got lost. So hang on. Maybe not. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yes, sir. Okay. That's the newest like diagram that we have right there. And on roof A, they took off one panel, and on, on roof B, they took off a panel, and they moved them over to roof B. And then that little bitty roof that trains next to D, that's the setback that they moved there, which I, I and my supervisor do not understand why that was moved there. But. So, so say, could you say that again, please? You're talking about roof D? Yeah, roof D is in David. Um, right, where, yeah. So if you look in kind of up and to the left, there's a little triangular section of roof right there. Yeah. And they added a setback right there that that's really the only one we didn't understand why that okay. one was there. Okay. All right. Um, there's plenty of, there's, there's sufficient room for fire department to move around up there. Um, anybody that would need to get onto the roof, they have access to anything and all things on the roof. Right. Um, well, you know. well, the, 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 we, we understand that's usually the case. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't install one that couldn't be adequately handled from by the fire department. Correct. The, the issue is, is the uh, guidelines and if we're meeting them or not. I see that you've definitely made some change, uh, whether it meets them all or not, I'm not sure. Uh, if Do any other commissioners have any any questions about this? Yes, I, I have two questions. One, I'd like to know exactly how far from the top of the roof the solar panels are in inches. If you bear with me in just a second here, let me look into that. Sure. Didn't mean to unshare that, so let me bring it back on up here. There it is. Well, it looks to me that approximately one to two inches at the closest roof peak, which would be roof C, where roof A and roof C meet, um, that would be the closest approximately two inches away from the roof peak. Um, they may be able to drop it down a tad bit by not having the spacing as much in between the rows of panels, but that at the same time may drop it down below the two foot setback from the bottom of the roof. Um, so that, that two inches there on roof C would probably be need to be kept. Um, and the next closest point I see would be roof A slash the other side of roof C. And they both look approximately four inches. Hey, I apologize. Is that you're saying from the peaks? Um, maybe I need to uh, reiterate the question. Um, what I was asking was uh, in between the solar panel and the roof itself. So how high does it sit up off of the roof? My apologies, sir. That is totally adjustable. Anywhere from three inches, I think, is the lowest point up to six and a half inches. But the solar panels do need in between five to six inches to sit off the roof. So that way they have adequate airflow to keep the heat down. 
Okay, uh, I just have one more question for you. Um, are any of the panels visible from the public web? Yes, sir. I'm not going to lie. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, we know they are. So how, how many? Yes. Uh, which pretty much roof A and the same side roof C you see and also roof B those three are the main on the main road on Florida Street itself um, but all, it's, it's a very wide street um, very large houses large spacing in between the houses so you can, you can see the array everything except for roof D and coming Okay. I don't want to tell you guys that it's going to be completely hidden and then you guys drive by there and be like, no. this guy, what the heck? We, we, we are that it's visible. That's why the set setbacks in the in the in the number of inches off the roof are critical so it doesn't stick out. So it's, it's, it appears to take the shape of the same pitch and the same shape of the roof. To make yes, it sir. less, less, uh, less visible, less visible. Yeah. yeah. Once yeah. again, unfortunately, they are large solar panels, so it's it, we we have we do the best we can to keep them vis um, as less visible as possible. But once again, they are large solar panels. So. Okay. Any other question? Commissioners have any? Yes, I, I do, uh, Mr. Isaacs. Go the ahead. Roof C as in Charlie, roof B as in boy, the east um, side of that roof, there's a setback on roof B, but there is no setback on the east side of roof C. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. The reason being on roof C, that setback works from the bottom up. So same with roof B, that setback works from the bottom up. So both sets of panels would be, if you're looking at them, they would be actually portrait. So up yeah. and down. Okay. So it's just because of how the, the picture is. That's why. Yeah, it, uh, understood. It. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Hearing none, I'd entertain a moment at the application for a certificate of appropriateness at 176 Floor Street for the roof mounted solar array uh, as. Uh, written as uh, described in the in the uh, information. So moved. Okay, thank you. Is there a second on the motion? A second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Oh, we haven't. Commissioner Nardi has joined us. Just for the record. Just a question. Um, yeah. I don't see any exterior elevations in the plans. I just looked through them all. Is there is there anything that can show us how minimal we see them or not? Just one second. Let me see if I can find that information. Yeah, we were just talking about the. I'm sorry. How far it would be from the roof. Yeah. Well, I, I, I see that, but you know the roof roofs have an angle, so you right. see them you see them differently than you do in a flat-on elevation of a drawing of some right. sort. So that's why it's sometimes helpful to see a photograph with the panels on them. Um, bear with me here, look, second. I'm just looking through our structural letter to see if it says anything in the structural letter. Um, if not, it definitely says something in our spec sheet. So I'll just have to look to see really quickly what style panels they're going to have. Give me, give me just one second and then I'll look up their spec sheet so I can tell yeah, you because it's the it's the actual panel specifications that lets us know how high we can have that off the roof. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that worried about how high it is. What I'm worried about is what does the panel look like? Is it a, is it a reflective glass? Is it a, a bronze solar glass? What is it? No, it's it's a it's slightly reflective. Um, that would only be if you were pretty much looking dead at it. And you like shine a flashlight at it, or you're looking, you're installing it on the roof, and it's shining up at the sun directly. Mm -hmm. um, when you see it from an angle, they don't really give off a glare or anything of that nature. We're using panels that are one second. I'll tell you, they are uh, longy panels, and those panels there are besides probably the LG panels, 
and the sun power panels, those are our least amount of glare. Like okay. anytime you do a ground mount solar array, um, that's usually a lot of panels. So we'll try to use these logies here. Um, typically, they, they're a little bit cost effective. And the glare is very, very low because a lot of inspectors don't like glare. Okay. And yeah, I see them. I'm looking them up. So these panels, yeah, they're and they're all black. They have a black frame. They're black. Um, yeah. So. And, and there is glass on it, obviously, but it's very low, very low glare. Um, and I'm looking on their spec sheets now to see how high they can sit off the roof. I know that really wasn't a question, but. Okay. Well, it, it, the, the, how high off the roof is, is a condition. You know, we don't, we want them the same pitch as the roof and as close to the roofing material as possible. And um, usually, I think four and a half inches is about was was what we considered the minimum. I mean, the minimum. Yeah, like I said, these are anywhere from any um, three inches to six and a half inches are how how much adjustable adjustability the feet have. Um, so that way, we we work with multiple different um, styles of panels, and they all have different information. I'm actually I'm trying to look it up now. This is a in depth sheet here. Um, I do apologize, gentlemen. Okay. Wow. That, I actually can't even locate that right here. Let's see. Um, well, it's going to be parallel to the roof, right? It's not going to be, oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I do be apologize, one end and two inches at the other, right? This one here is uh, six inches for this plan set here for the, the racking system we're going to be using and the laundry panels will be give or take six inches. Six inches would be the maximum that they would go. And like I said, there's a playability of about two and a half to three and a half inches there. So they definitely have it right around the four and a half to maybe four inches, maybe three and a half at the absolute lowest. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Walsh is yes. Commissioner Schultes? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, that passes tonight. I mean, it's, it's a better installation and setback arrangement than you had previously put in front of us, so. Yeah. Um, that passes, and you can, you know, Alvin can talk to you tomorrow about that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, 393 Maple Street, and there's no count. And Alvin, he said nothing on, no commentary on anything tonight, right? So I'm not that's, missing anything? Okay. That's correct. We don't have any commentary. Okay. This is an application for a certificate of appropriateness. It's to be made free, the Gospel Publish Incorporated uh, for an ADA compliant ramp to the right side of the building. Is there is the a petitioner on? Is there anything the petitioner would like to add? Yes. Uh, my name is Mark Waterburn, uh, MAW Construction Work, um, representing uh, Pastor Duca. Rents and Duca. Okay. Do we have that in writing, um, Alvin? Yeah. So I believe they supplied it for the last meeting. Okay. So okay. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry. There's also on the call. So. Okay. Oh. I do have some um, some uh, uh, information as far as I want to share my screen. Uh, be patient with me. I've never used. Uh, Share a screen with Zoom before, so let me uh, give it a shot here. We have the, the um, 3D rendition of what, okay. of what more or less what we're proposing. Um, this is an example. They would like to use uh, a wood 
for um for the ramp but the, the um the ramp will be on as we said on the right side of the building mm -hmm. the documentation that we submitted um we have some um google folders fo some photos of um from google earth of what the building looked like now so you could imagine yep. what it would look like with the uh with the ramp on this side i mean there'd be very little exposure to to the street uh you know looking straight on everything is again on the right side there's trees on that side that obviously we're not going to be getting rid of and um and it's going to wrap around the back side <laughs> and allow entry on the back portion of the building <laughs> um we have some uh, a question was asked how are we planning to uh to make those connections as far as um, to the, the, the uh, connections to the wood. And I got a couple of photographs, just again, as, as examples of how we can achieve what we're, what we're trying to do here. Uh, I had another well, one here, this thing. It's okay, take your time, but the rendering makes it appear like it would be a, like a concrete ramp, not a wood ramp. Would there be, but you're saying it's going to be made out of wood? Yes, that's what that's what um, okay, that's what the, the owners requested. Okay, and, and and there's because then there's uh, you know what are the what am I trying to say there? What what is it going to be faced with? You know what what's going to be hiding underneath the ramp? Is that going to be Lattice is there going to be, you know, that's wouldn't quite be appropriate, I don't think, but, um, you know, the, so we don't really have the, the material or the structure, how it's actually going to be made. I don't see that we have that information in our file here, unless I'm missing it. No, um, um, we don't have a, a list of material, uh, dear, but like I said, uh, I have an example on the screen now of um, what we would possibly be doing. Right, so, you know, and I have a pic, and I have a picture of that, but it doesn't tell me what the what the finished ramp would look like. It's just a, you know, like the sides are just grayed out. I mean, it it certainly shows us clearly where it will be, and that's important to us as well. But it doesn't tell us the material, the, you know, the, um, you know, I mean, it's it's if ADA compliance, so all the pitches are going to be correct, and we I get that part. Uh, is there anything more? I mean, is it going to be built like uh, like with decking material kind of thing, or with uh... yeah? Uh, it, I mean, pressure treated um, pressure treated wood, obviously, um, okay. for exterior um, uses. Um, the the railing would be um, uh, uh, iron railing, um, uh, similar to the ones that that we're looking at here on the screen. <laughs> All, all ADA compliant. Yes, sir. All right. Any any commissioners have any uh, questions? Well, I I have more of a comment. Um, one, uh, I I'm familiar with where the house is, and I even have it on my screen here at the moment. You can't really see the ramp all that much, or even probably at all, um, except perhaps from one of the direct abutters. I would be curious uh, to see. Um, what they had to say if they wanted to say anything about it uh, as well um, in, in looking uh, at the um, photograph, um, the railings, I would want uh, to see those in a, uh, a dark color. Um, and I think that a better rendering um, by the next meeting uh, would be beneficial uh, as well because you really can't kind of kind of see what's going on. I kind of visualize and I kind of understand, Mark, what it is that you're saying, um, but it, it's it's better to have it presented in front of us so that we can um, see it clearly. Um, that's all I really had to say on it. Okay. Sure. sure. And if I could say, Mr. Wedderburn, first of all, th thank you so much for the rendering and I think the placement, I think it really is ideal 
um, for a building of, of this nature. And I just want to echo uh, Brian McFarland's commentary. I, I think that when it is done, uh, what we found is that if it's done in a, in a darker color, then it te whether that's the wood or the railing, um, then it, the ramp tends to recede to the point where you can't even see it at all. So uh, we usually, like when it comes to the metal rail, uh, black is perfect. Um, and even the, the ramp itself, if it's pressure treated, you know, you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can paint it after that. But the darkest uh, color stain or paint possible um, usually helps it to disappear. That would be my only commentary, but uh, seems uh, very respectful to the historic character of the building. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Yes, if I may. Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner uh, Nardi. When you when you do uh, detail the rendering a little bit more, do you have the site elevation again that shows us? Because if it's an ADA ramp, you're going to have to have railings on the wall as well. Yes. Right. So um, the commissioners might want to see what's actually going to be attached to the existing structure. Can okay. They, First rendering they gave us when they gave us the picture of it shows things up on the wall. The first rendering they are there. My my question is, was more about because this doesn't didn't give us a material a, a vision what material was there. It's what the material would be and what it would look like. Um, this is actually up for a vote today, but because it was uh, received March seventeenth, um, we're, we're within the six days to go to the next meeting. So I, I mean, if, if you, we need more information from them or a better rendering and the, uh, what materials are actually gonna be used, I'd entertain a motion to continue to the May 6th meeting. Or if you, if you feel confident that we have enough information, I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for certificate of appropriateness, so. Can I make a comment uh, briefly? Yeah, sure. So I did uh, send some drawings in. Um, I, I'm not sure if you had those elevation views, um, Alvin. Um, I can uh, try to look for them, but I did send a drawing with a uh, specific elevation, front and side elevations. Yeah, I have, I have that in front of me. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but it sounds like commissioners have a have a question more I mean the elevation pictures the renderings you sent us show location and and you know in general uh, appearance really well uh, but it doesn't say anything about material being used or you know how it's going to be constructed or, or or it doesn't say specifically material about the what the handrails will be made out of uh, and if uh, to the commissioners, my question to commissioners, if you want need more information, then I would entertain a motion to continue to the meeting so we can get that, the actual material information. Or if you are comfortable with what you have, then we can make a motion to uh, the, I mean, so I'd entertain a motion if someone would like to. Well, I'd like to move that we continue until um, and give them a little extra time to answer the questions. Is there a second on that motion? I second. Okay, the motion has been uh, the motion on the floor to continue is to the mark to the May sixth meeting. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll, I'll call the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Finn. Yes. Commissioner McFarland. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. And Commissioner Schultes? Yes. Okay. So we, because we don't have enough, uh, Mr. Waterburn, because we didn't, we don't, I don't think we have enough information on the material in the structure. And so we have continued it. If you could get that information for us for the next meeting. Um, so we continued it to the May 6th meeting. We'll do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, now the next, the next four, we're beginning the public hearing, so the we will not be voting uh, to approve or not approve. We will simply be um, allowing the, the petitioners to, pre, you know, to tell us what, what's up and we can ask our questions, allow for public commentary moving forward. So uh, next is uh, 75 Mulberry Street. It's an application for certificate of appropriateness to Okay, to replace the ports at 75 Mulberry Street, they have determined the structure deteriorated. Um, it, I'm going to read some of this completely rotted. Uh, tearing down the existing structure, including footings, rebuild footings, use of pressure retreat material and hardwood assembly of historic appropriateness. Include utilizing decorative historic salvage materials or replace replication of elements that could not be salvaged to match originals, including decking, beadboard, ceiling, and balustrade. Contract to make every effort to preserve the decorative rosette at the top section of the stairway. If it can't be salvaged, it would be molded and replicated to match. Existing porch asphalt roofing to be removed and replaced. Okay. Um, who, who is here to talk on this one? Hi, so yeah, I'm Tina Quagliato Sullivan from the city. The city is funding the project. The homeowner is also here. Her name is Lori Campbell. Um, and Courtney, hey, Lori, thank you. Courtney Rose, who is um, represents Plotkin, the city's outside inspector, will be writing the specs for the job. Okay. And then obviously we bid to a contractor. Okay, excellent. I mean, the description certainly makes it clear that you're going to use appropriate replacement uh, techniques. So we're happy about that. Any commissioners have any questions of the petitioner or the city representative or whoever's here? No. Nope. I did not. want to mention that uh, I am familiar with this property as well and I've walked by it many times and the um, porch is quite dilapidated. The house overall is absolutely beautiful and in, in, in great condition, mm -hmm. but the, the porch, it, it does need to be replaced okay um, um i just want to say i'm a neighbor my daughters went to mill all three of them went to milton bradley and so thank you for um doing that work you know and beautifying the neighborhood excellent um so any other comments or questions uh if there are none i'd entertain a motion to continue to the may 6th meetings to allow for public commentary and is there a second on the motion second, second. Okay, thank you. Is there any, any discussion on the motion? Okay, I'm going to go through the roll call. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Wall? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? Yes. And Commissioner? Yes. Okay. So we continue that. For, to allow for public commentary until the May 6th meeting. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is 47 Bellevue Avenue. It's an application for a certificate of appropriateness to remove and replace the four sun porch windows it says the 97 year old windows are warped, require wooden storms that are also warped, not efficient, and the storms are very difficult to put in place for the winter. Please see the photo window plan specifications. Okay, who's here to? Uh, is Paula Jane Hetzel? Uh, would you like to describe? Oh, there you are. Okay, go ahead. Um, yes, you... um, we have lived in, my husband Paul and I have lived in this house for 43 years almost 44 years, um, mm -hmm. and we have decided after much, many winters and springs taking these uh, storm windows up and down, uh, that it's time to replace the, um, the windows. And opening the windows. <laughs> and opening the windows is a struggle. So we are replacing them with Marvin windows. Um, I think you've, you see the specs there. I, I did try to send a little video of the window, but I have the sample here, if you'd like to see it. Okay, whatever you can show us, 
Should be good. This is the exterior. Oh, we lost you, I think. Yep. Okay. Wood. Um, and that's about it. As you saw on the specs, there will be in the large windows, there will be three, three windows that um, push out. Um, and the other two, uh, other three windows, there'll be um, uh, two windows that push out. Which okay. would be exactly how they work now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now, are the, the, what's the, are the windows made of? The windows the, are wood. Okay. But they're clad in aluminum in, the on the outside. Okay. We had windows replaced in the house 10 years ago. Every window in the and house. And um, they're uh, clad windows also. And the, uh, are you maintaining the same lights, the, the 3, 6, 9, 15? Yep. Yep. Okay. yep, everything will be the same. You won't be able to tell the difference from the outside. Okay, the, and the uh, read through the, it looks like everything's covered. Any questions, have any questions or comments relative to this uh, application? Is it, uh, to Alan, is this a previously approved window type? I mean... Is it, have we done this one before? I'm not sure, I'll have to check the list, but uh, I know we, you, you guys have approved uh, Marvin windows in the past. Okay, I, sure I, I was just it. curious. I know some of these things can be expedited if we've approved yeah. it and it's the same. They're cut, these, these will be custom windows. It'll take about 12 weeks to yep. create. Yeah, uh, question. So since, since they're custom and they're made to fit the existing opening, so you're not gonna be changing the opening and you're not changing the exterior no. trim. Nope. No. Now you're paying that extra money to have it fit. Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Right. Yes. No, it seems it seems like a and whatever. As I'm reading through it, I had scanned it before. It seems like it looks like a pretty good window. I'm just trying to just check, making sure we think think about some of the details. Um, uh, any other commissioners? No. Is there anything else, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hetz, you'd like to tell us about this? No, just, you know, the, just the, can't wait for it to happen. The old ones <laughs> don't work, and you would not be able to tell the difference looking yeah. at the house from the street or the sidewalk with the new windows. And these are more uh, obviously more energy efficient. Of course. Um, OK, if there's nothing else you'd like to add, and there is no other questions or comments from commissioners, I would entertain a motion to continue uh, the application to the May 6th meeting. I moved. Okay. Second. Okay, thank you very much. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna call the roll here. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Walsh is yes. Commissioner Schultes? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Okay, so we're, that's voted to continue to allow for public commentary and, um, and then see you at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, now we have 10 Cornell. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness to replace 10 windows. Um, it says already approved vendor installed at 34. Um, is that the vendor that was approved or the windows that was approved? Um, and there's, you know, they have all the, the type and quantity and the description, double hung, uh, let's see. Melrose cherry inside, white outside, no goods. Okay, uh, Alexander and Marie DeMar DeMarty? Damari. Damari. Yep. Okay. okay, go uh, ahead. Tell us, tell, tell, just describe your project for us. Okay, so um, every single, so we've been here now for 21 years. It's really uh, in the winter, 
it's unbearably cold we do and we can't open up the windows um, my wife has back issues i've had brain surgery there's limitations on what we can do so we don't take off the storm windows we can't open up our windows on the first floor um, our house the colors of our house go with white trim um, so we'd like to replace the windows the person uh, mark lavoy who represents advanced windows um, is here to talk about them and hi guys so how are you he can talk on. more about the the windows themselves so uh well i'm from advanced window systems uh we actually so what I guess I'll start by just saying that we are, you know, as far as on the list, uh, if you go to springfield.gov uh, and you can go into the, um, you know, into the download for window replacement appropriateness and standards. We've done work on Sumner Avenue and it says right there, advanced window systems. Our windows approved, our, our window is our window uh, so that we, we are an approved window uh, on your list. So that's number one. Um, and we're doing the same, it's the same window. Um, what Alexander has on the house right now is white. He has a storm that shows all white border, uh, white where the meeting rails are. And we're just putting in exactly what's, what's there. Um, he doesn't have uh, any grid. So we're not doing a grid pattern. It's just a clear glass top and bottom. So by the time we're done, it'll, it'll look, you know, exactly the way it looks right now. Okay. Uh, well, just... Actually, uh, being, uh, I mean, being on the list, and I guess we thought we were approved, we actually moved forward. We actually manufactured the windows already for exact Alexander, which we apologize. We thought oh. that that we were on the list, being that we were there, that it wasn't an issue. So well, I, I, I don't know that. It may not be an issue. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, the uh, I'm looking at the pictures that were submitted with the file, and it looks like some of the pictures are the, the windows are dark in color, not light, not white. Um, but other than that, I don't. The ones that you're looking at. I mean, I have the pictures right here of this one, for instance. These yeah. are white. Uh, it looks like the other ones, any of the dark ones that you might have, those looks like they were painted after the fact. Uh, because all the ones, the ones that I see, uh, this one is white. This one was white. From the outside, not from the inside. Oh. The, uh, this is from the outside. That's an outside picture? Yep. Yes. That's, from That's the, outside. the outside of my house. Okay. It looks you know, from, it, with the picture being so small there, it looks like a room. That looks almost like a floor. So let me get a little closer to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can see that now. And uh, our frame and everything where our window sits, it's going to look exactly the same look as what it looks like right there as you see it. Okay. And the, the, the construction of the window is vinyl? I, it yes. Is. Okay. Any commissioners have any questions or comments? Because it's... it's uh, I'd have to do some research to see that that window was an approved window. I don't, I don't. If you want, I can share, uh, I can share my screen if you want. And I can, I got the list pulled up, I can, website, if you like. Well, I, I'm looking at, it's. Commissioner Walsh, if I can interject. So yes, this please, particular please window product was approved at 34 Sumner Ave. However, it was approved in a brown exterior color. But okay. it, it was okay. in fact in, approved at 34 Sumner Avenue. Okay, thank you. I, I couldn't, I couldn't. Yeah, even you know what, the, the window is the same. It's the same window. So again, we matched, uh, we did a brown there because of the fact that it was brown to begin with. Over at Alexander's house, it's white. So therefore we do white. The window is the same window because we only well, have one line of window. Right, but <laughs> historic, uh, we're trying to preserve the historic uh, detail the windows are generally dark in color. That's why we ask for dark in color windows, not white. But um, anyway, any other commissioners have any? Uh... But, but don't you want to match the style of what's there? Because, you know, again, because the windows there, that, and these are the historic, these are the old wood storm windows. 
So again, we would be in line uh, matching the what color. Co what color are the windows behind the storm windows? They could be any color. Honestly, we haven't taken them off in 21 years. No, I understand. I'm just asking Mr. Lavoie a question. Yeah. What what color are the the window uh, the sashes the window sashes not the not the storm windows the regular no, windows. Un unfortunately I've only seen an exterior look of the windows and on the exterior of the home or from the street and places like that you'd only see the white window so that's all I, that's all I know is what the storm and what the look of the house is okay. are any of the uh, then I'll address the owner any of the, the uh, windows that you're placing dark in color no uh, I, mean, I know the storms are white i understand the storms are white but are the windows themselves dark in color you know something honestly we had everything painted white on the outside because we all the trim on our house goes with white so we painted everything and i i can honestly give you my word i don't know because i've never taken off the storms i've okay. never even paid attention honestly i was sir. just asking it wasn't you know i'm just asking for a, a detailed question because it, it it you know part of what we're looking at is not if someone was an approved vendor but we are looking for an approved window and an approved uh an appropriate color of that window for historic housing now i don't you know, this is this is up to a vote. It's not up to me. I'm just yeah, right. the windows. And, the, the construction of the window may have been approved somewhere, uh, but it doesn't make it automatic somewhere else. Especially since it got approved with a color, which which is what I couldn't imagine that we had approved that in white, because right. we just don't approve them in white. This is but something I, I don't understand. I also put into the pictures all the surrounding houses in my neighborhood all have white windows. Yeah, well, um, I don't know that that's the case, and I don't know that it's uh, I submitted the, the pictures. I actually submitted the pictures. The house across the street has got white vinyl. The house beside me is white vinyl. The house two doors down is white vinyl. The house on the corner is white vinyl. Okay, well, I, I'm, this, is, this is one of the hard parts of what we do, because we, we can't, if somebody next to you came didn't come in front of us and they put in windows and, and i don't know about it then the, the commission doesn't not me like i said this always goes to a vote it has no doesn't matter what my opinion is uh, but we have because you're in a historic district those district guidelines are are set up and and we have to and our job is to try and and uh, maintain the historic uh, integrity of the neighborhood uh, i mean if everybody does it it, it if everybody does maintain their historic integrity of their homes, as you clearly you have, you, you're trying to do, everybody's home is better off. Uh, but Question. because a neighbor's window, and I use I use the speeding analysis. If somebody, if everybody's speeding on the highway and a cop pulls you over, it doesn't mean you weren't speeding, and, and you're in front of us, which was the right thing to do. And we are always willing to listen and work. Uh, but we have to we have to take a, a look at. At what the, the guidelines and what have you are. It's just not automatic. Go ahead, Commissioner Nardi. Okay, so just for clarification to either the homeowner or the, or the contractor, the existing storm windows will remain and the new windows will be installed behind the storm windows that are there. Is that true? Um, no, that was no. No? Okay, so the existing white storm windows are coming off. They would, and then our window would set in, you know, it, it would set basically right where those storms are. Mm -hmm. And that's where the storm window, like the, the actual white that you're seeing. So for instance, you know, you have the white, so these are the white storm windows that he currently has. Right. Our window is gonna set basically right within where that is. So that's exactly what ours is gonna look like. So again, keeping the look of what is home, what it is right now, which I'm assuming that's what it's about is keeping the look of what he has right now. So we would be keeping that same exact look that he has right now. Okay, thank you. I understand now. Okay. Yep. Just on a, on a technicality, the, the commission isn't, our goal is not to maintain the way a house looks now. It's what the historically appropriate look would be. Uh, but that's just an aside. Any other commissioners have any questions or, dis or comments? Um, I do, Chairman Wall. Go ahead, Commissioner Finn. So, Mr. Lavoie, you said that the, the window is going to be sitting where the current storm windows 
uh, I guess, profile or, or face is? Is uh, it, it going to be, be further to toward the front of the house in the current uh, in the current window, not not the storm window? The the window is going to set in the the exterior stop where that storm window butts up against. So our window will set back possibly like just a couple inches from where you're seeing that storm window right now. And but so it would it would set in it would set in a little bit like this one is uh, sets in just a little bit from the casing. Ours would set a little bit further back, but. Yeah. The dimension wise, like of the white that you're seeing, ours would be relatively the same kind of dimension that way, but it would just be recessed in a little bit into the house. Okay, so it's gonna be a traditional replacement window. You're not modifying um, the channel with it, with, within it will sit. All right, correct, we're okay. not modifying that. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, any other commissioners? Okay, hearing none, um, I would entertain a motion to continue this application for a certificate of appropriateness at 10 Cornell Street to the uh, May 6th meeting to allow for public commentary. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Schultes? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. So we, we, we have, you know, we're continuing to allow for public commentary and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Okay. And will I get another Zoom invitation? Yes. All right. Absolutely. Fantastic. I thank you so much for your time. Hey. What day is that again? That's, it's Thursday, the 6th of May. Thursday, the 6th. It's always of May. Thursday. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Really appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now we have 130, 132 Washington Road. We have an application for certificate of hardship to install gutters and soffit. Um Okay, so if Ms. Nugent, if you'd like to just tell us what you're doing, describe the project for us, please. Yeah, and make sure you hear me. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, so um, to able to to put the the um, gutter in is all the wood is brass. So um, we keep waiting to um, install the gutter because it's damaged the um, the cellar the uh, the basement so just wondering is is um we able to replace the um i mean the sofas at the yeah. same time uh before we um do the garden okay now i did i, I read that you want to cover the sofas are you going to replace the wood of the sofas and then cover it with vinyl is that what i read yes because it's the bird get in and they rot and they they I don't I want to take care for for the building like nice and clean because it's it's look very disgusting and um, um to be up there is is uh, every every uh, contractor they they ask in a liability if you have to go up there even replace wood or anything include the garden so at the same time so um just looking for uh anything can help to approve um my um apply application yeah, the application seems to just say that you're going to cover the wood that's there yeah as yeah. opposed to repair the wood that there okay is there anything else you'd like to add Oh, I, 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 I don't think you understand me. Yes, I okay. cover the wood with the with the vinyl um, uh, surface to be safety. Right, but are you are you replacing the wood and repairing the wood before you cover it? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Any other commissioners have any 
questions or comments on the application? Okay, here we go. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Nugent, you, you can you have time. What else oh, would you like to add? Oh, that's it, that's it. Okay. Yeah, to be safety for, um, I mean, for everything. I, I, I don't know how I, I can say more than what I know, but, um, you know, uh, um, I don't want to pay, but it's, um, you know, it's the wood. It's, um, uh, I'm sure it's, I replay the wood, then I call for it. To make it, um, you know. Yeah. Um, because in the, in the application, let's see, I don't see that it's, unless I'm missing it, I don't see that they're repairing, okay, the wood. This sounds like it's covering. Okay. Oh, do you want me to, to yeah. Um, uh, in, 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 in general, it, it would be a, appropriate to, to repair the wood and wood. Yes. And then add, and then add the gutters to that. Uh, but if this is this is what admitted, um, you know, we can put it to public commentary. Um, any other commissioners have any comments? No? Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion to continue the uh, application for certificate of hardship at 130 Washington Road to the May 6th meeting for public to allow for public commentary. So move. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? Um, Commissioner Walsh, I have a question for Ms. Wynn. Yes, go ahead. Ms. Wynn, do you have a contractor doing the work for you? Um for that, um and, and, and I of asked course they do it. Yes, I, I cannot do you. myself either. I'm sorry, say that again. I cannot do myself. Right. I have I, to do that, but um, again, it's the the uh, the gutter and will be uh, installed after I finish this part. Okay. Okay. I, I ask only because I think maybe at the next meeting the commissioners might have some questions about how that's actually going to be done from a from a detailed perspective. Um, let, let me say something. It's Mr. Vincent just saying it is it's it will be uh replay the wood, then it make the um the vinyl cover. So that is what it is. So I, I don't know if the construction can be involved into it. They, they just waiting their time for nothing. And uh, you and you know that it's, it's, uh, nobody do uh you know it's it's, it's well here I I I, I I didn't know it's uh, a yes or no, but that is what I want to know, but it's belong with the construction as, um, that's a very simple, even I'm not the professional, but it's replay the wood. It's, 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 it's very, very rough, very bad. Then we, Mr. Mr. Benson just saying, this is, we be right. well, that. The reason I was- professional do it, I'm not doing right. myself. Right, the reason I was asking those questions is because it's, historically appropriate to, to replace the wood with the same type of wood and the same without changing the appearance, but covering it with vinyl is not really acceptable. So replacing the wood appropriately with new new wood and repairing your your uh, your wood is, is appropriate. The, the, the gutters are a whole different thing, but um, it, it would be more acceptable to the commission if replaced, just repaired and replaced and repainted your wood as opposed to just covering, you know, replacing, I mean, repairing some wood and then covering it with vinyl. Uh, but, uh, so, any other uh, comments or questions for the petitioner and the motion on the floor to continue? Um, let me just call the, the vote. Um, I'm going to start at the top this time. Uh, Commissioner Walsh is a yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. And Commissioner Schultes? 
Yes. Okay. Now, so we, we continue that to the May 6th meeting to allow for public commentary. And uh, we'll see you then. Quick question. Is there any information that you guys would want to see for her to, um, I guess, because she's under hardship. So I guess to make the case for the hardship, is there any information that you guys would want to see? Or is I, I would suggest some close up photos of the existing condition so that we really see what the contractor is trying to, to suggest to the owner. We sent a uh, lot of picture before. Yeah, and there's the, the picture is, is, is returned to me uh, by Alvin. So okay. I don't know if he keep <clears throat> any picture for um, condition of okay. the... Um, I have some, some pictures here that, hold on. I have forwarded your pictures to the commission. Okay, I just, I haven't seen it. So I will take the time to take a look. Thank you. Well, this is, we've seen, yeah, we some of these pictures we saw under a different application, right? No? Um, she, she sent specific pictures to the sources. Okay. That, that should be in your last packet. Right. Okay. And they, and they're, I do have them here. Yeah, yeah. that's our, yeah. And it's, that picture by itself isn't, you know, horrible. Obviously, that some of the finished work, I mean, the finished piece there is a little, this is kind of almost the same one, the same kind of thing. So, and then this is just, this is. It, it looks like part of the reason why this is happening, it doesn't look like the soffit has any venting at all in it. This is the, that same picture again. So. Say that again, Commissioner Darney. It, it almost looks like I don't see any any venting in that soffit area at all. So that could be what's causing this. I don't know. All right. I'll, I'll find the pictures and I'll look closer. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, this, this has been continued to the May 6th to allow for public commentary. And you'll get a link. Alvin will send you a link for that meeting on May 6th. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Walsh, um, I, w I have a request to remove a couple of items ahead um, under all of the matters, uh, yeah. numbers one and two for section 106 review. Would you be able yeah. to take those out of order uh, in front of the municipal project? Any objection to taking those out of order, commissioners? Hearing none, we'll take the we'll move. One Federal Street, section 106 review, and then 95 State Street, section 106 review. If I could find them, it'd be awesome. This is the mold. Someone here, him. Uh, this is Laura Mankey, so I, I can talk about both of them. Okay. okay, if you could, if you would, go right uh, ahead. Which one would you like me to start with? Well, I have, uh, I have Federal Street in front of me first. Okay. So these are both T-Mobile uh, modifying their existing installations. For Federal Street, they're going to remove and replace three existing antennas, one per sector and install three new antennas. So you guys, uh, you have the drawings in we front do. of you. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Are there gonna, I mean, just to say, I, I can't tell by reading these if there's gonna be ch dramatic changes in appearance or size or anything like that to these antennas. Mm. They are going to be a little bit bigger than the existing ones. So one will be, one for each will be the same exact antenna. And then two new ones are going to be a little bit larger than the other ones. And I think if you look at page 
I'm trying to see where it is. Angela says. So if you look at the elevation drawing, you can see the existing versus the proposed side sizes. Okay. And these these have both been submitted to the State Historic Preservation Office, but we have not heard back yet. Okay. Any commissioners have any questions on these? Just a technical question. So the brackets are going to probably be different because it's a little bigger? Um, they're going to be on the same mounts. So they're just going to add, there's only two existing antennas, so they'll have to add a third bracket, a third mount but they'll be on the same sled mount as the other ones. Okay, so we're not removing something and leaving a hole for water to get in or anything like no, that? No, 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 it's gonna go on that existing slide. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And would this 95 State Street be roughly the same yep. situation? I, I think so, Let me just pull that one up. So for this one, Two of the existing, uh, this one's complicated. Uh, three existing antennas are going to be removed and replaced. And three will be relocated. So this one's just a confusing because it's on two buildings adjacent mm -hmm. to each other. Yep. Uh, just turn these drawings. Yeah, I couldn't read that with a magnifying glass. Oh, uh, yeah. I have it very much blown up on my computer right now, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so it's going to basically be the same. They're just replacing the antennas. One is going to be a little bit bigger, probably around the same as the other installation, the same size antenna. I'm the architectural historian on these, so I'm not the, the technical person. Yeah. Um, mm hmm okay so um it looks like it might be the same antenna so two will be the same size one they're just going to be relocated in order to have the third antenna fit okay all right any uh any commissioners have any questions for laura um are there any questions in general for either of these, Federal Street or State Street? Um, no. So what, what do we need here, Alvin? So you guys are voting whether or not the installation will have an adverse impact. Or the change, will the change ad adversely impact it any more than what's already there? That, that's correct. Okay. All right. Well, I don't, I don't think it'll have any change and impact myself. I'm not sure any other commissioners want to jump in on that. I would agree. Okay, so somebody wants to make the motion worded however you think it should be. Another thing could be um, the exterior color. I'm not sure what the color, exterior color of these uh, mounts are, or the uh, uh, antennas will be. Um, I would look I think they're just, they're all just the standard antenna color, that white standard color. That's what no, the existing all- Little thing. Exactly, and, they, and that's what the existing are. So that's what the proposed would be. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's not, I don't think it's making any notice, notable or mark, you know, marked change to the, well, antennas are antennas, I mean, I, I Sometimes we wish they weren't there at all, but they're there already. I don't think this is going to change the impact or adversely impact any more than what's already there. So um, if somebody wants to make a motion relative to that. Okay, I'll, I'll make, go ahead, David. Okay, sorry. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the uh, removal of three existing antennas and reinstallation of six new antennas at one Federal Street. Um, in addition to the installation of new antennas at 95 State Street. Okay, so so the motion is the motion is that we're we don't find it's that we understood. Okay. Okay. All right. So second. There's a sec, second on the motion. Second. 
is there any discussion on the motion? Um, is I have a question for Alvin, if you can, is that worded appropriately for what we need to, I mean, just approving them should be sufficient, correct? I believe so. Um, but again, if you want to add the language that it, it does not have an, um, a negative impact. Yes, exactly. To the architectural um, features of the building. Okay. okay. If you'd like to. Chairman Walsh, I can rephrase that if you'd like. I would like that, yep. Okay. I'd like to make a motion um, to suggest that the removal and replacement of antennas at one Federal Street and 95 State Street do not have a negative impact on the historical integrity of those buildings. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, could I get another second down that motion just for re-second? Re-second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, we call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Schultes? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay. There's 106. They're all set. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Let me just finish marking my vote, vote paperwork here. Uh, Miss Nguyen, your, your property was continued to the next meeting, May 6th, so you're all set for tonight. Yeah. And we have now a review of municipal projects. Um, is that Kira who's joining us for this? How you yes. doing tonight? Good. Uh, are you speaking on all of these or just, are you just updating us? Uh, so I can talk in regards to the first three and give a general overview to probably the disaster recovery ones if you want. I don't have to go that explicit. Okay, um, just start at the top. Okay. So first I'm gonna start with a share screen of the municipal protocol, which I think everyone knows about by this point as well as uh, the trust has sent it out recently and I'm just going to briefly state it so essentially what's why these uh, properties are coming under display is because of municipal protocol which means any building constructed before 1950 that is municipally owned or is a project going to work um, a project involving building construction with mun municipal funds comes across the attention of Springfield Historical Commission. Uh, it involves also that you're notified of the address of the building, department name, contact person, email, etc. Description, proposal of demolition, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and whether the city owns the building or is funding the project, the year constructed, and then from the point that they notify you, you have up to 30 days to decide if it's a historically significant building. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, essentially, and if it has an adverse reaction or not. If, it, if you deem it doesn't have an adverse reaction to the historically significant building, it goes back to the department. If you think that it does have an adverse reaction and you have suggestions for the project, you can submit them. So that's why these buildings are coming under essentially review by the commission. So I'm going to stop share right now. Okay. I don't have a, per se a formal presentation for you. I just figured I'd briefly go over them. No, that's good. That's, so, that's what we need. For 26 uh, Terrence Street, 17 to 19 Northampton Avenue, and 71 McKnight Street, all of these buildings are municipally owned, okay. which is why these buildings are going to the Springfield Historical Commission. Uh, right now, it looks like it's a request for proposal. So the only thing I don't know is because it's a project hasn't been proposed yet for these buildings, 
it might come under you guys again because part of the protocols are supposed to tell you what the proposal is and you don't have one yet at least that's my understanding of it okay and for the essentially the list of municipally uh, funded projects for disaster recovery all of these are owned by different individuals as far as i can tell and again you have the contact list that alvin set up but it doesn't say what exactly the project is going to be again it just says uh, it's under disaster recovery but it doesn't say if it's rehabilitating or what exactly is going on and i'll give you an example so one of the ones under disaster recovery right now was one on the agenda which was the 75 mulberry street for the porch work mm -hmm. and that was under disaster recovery but from the list i see it's not saying if it's rehabilitation it's just giving a description name of disaster recovery uh, all of these buildings for disaster recovery are in the right time period so it does follow the protocol with that it's just it's not outlining the project if it's demolition rehabilitation reconstruction unless you just are counting disaster recovery as reconstruction again i'm just presenting as i understand okay. so again you're being notified which is great and i'm glad and that's wonderful uh this is just my points of the projects ahead of you so I guess at this point it's in my understanding of the protocol you'd have to decide if they're historically significant mm -hmm. if you need more details from them what the project is etc just to follow with the rest of it and I leave that up to the Commission because I again I'm just my interpretation of everything well normally we we want to the first thing we determine is this has historical significance and then of course we want to see what the project is going to be um but i think part of your concerns for a while is if, if these are really getting to us or not and yes. um so i so this is a step in the right direction right yes okay good i'm very happy i i am very happy i just wanted to present everything just yeah from no that's good so so because uh, this is quite a long list here yes and um so what uh, should we be expecting to hear hear from every single one of these in the near future uh so you already have the contact on here for all the projects as far as i can tell which is mostly uh tina right. who was on the call before yeah right. and bobby and bob yeah. which i haven't been able to go over the projects of bob yet i just went through quickly with disaster recovery yep and again i don't know if she realized that she needs to tell you what's going to be done or not because well, this is all starting to get informed to everybody yeah okay well i'm not sure you know that, that's quite a list there I, i'd be happy if we started seeing some of these to determine historic significance and then find out what the projects are going to be uh, but hey it's a step in the right direction i think i think so too i'm very pleased i just wanted to let you know and okay. uh, just inform well, you and thank you so much always for your time and the other thing i wanted to just quickly bring up if i could yeah you um, can i i sent through the trust essentially we sent a letter to many of the city officials about the municipal protocol mm -hmm. and uh previously we previously i drafted up and i sent to you Vinny, and i think to Al, alvin allen as well essentially mm -hmm. about people submitting these proposals to you so that way you could get all the stuff you need for municipal protocol and then what you decided as a sheet back to them afterwards so I don't know if this is something you might want to consider too to make this a little bit of an easier process or if this is something that needs to be looked over more. I just wanted to suggest and help where I can. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what what the uh, 
you know, I, I don't want to, like, I, I think I've said to you before, I don't want to put myself in the position of having to, to look around to see if they're doing it. You know, this is, a, if this is in place, this, this is supposed to be sent to us. So, and I don't really intend to change that particular outlook right now, but I'm happy as can be when they come to us and we do it correctly. So, Sorry, I, I wasn't trying to suggest. I just meant how you. No, had no, 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 Kara. I'm just, you know, you and I are on the same page. You and we've had, we've talked, you know, we were on the same page. Um, you know, just in general, I'm glad. I'd be happy as you are if they if they all come to us like they're supposed to. So I appreciate the, you know, I appreciate you putting yourself out there to get some of these things done correctly. Well, um, any, anybody have any questions for Kara? Any other, any other comments or anything? Because that's all we have, I think, today. We have one more item. I added a, okay. a third um, item under all other matters. Okay. Thirty uh, fourth Sumner Avenue. Oh yeah. Uh, you probably don't have it in the file. I, I just um, sent it later. later uh, this afternoon. Yeah, I, I, I did look at that. I just didn't print it for myself. Okay, so what's the last item? So again, it's a discussion, uh, 34 Sumner Avenue. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so just to kind of um, go back to the last meeting, uh, they came before the commission. They wanted to expand their parking in the front of the building. And they, uh, as part of that, they would uh, have to move their fence forward towards the, uh, the public sidewalk. Um, they presented um, and uh, the commission voted uh, three in favor, one against. But because um, you know, for a quorum, um, they need at least four uh, approval votes in order to move forward. And uh, so, it, because of uh, so, they were denied essentially. Right. Right. So yeah, at this point, um, they are now seeking to appeal the decision. Um, per the City of Springfield um, Charter, um, these items uh, anytime someone wants to appeal a decision by the historical commission they are required to go to superior court mm -hmm. so the property owner would rather not take it that far having to go to court so they're hoping for for some compromise from the, the commission so they have uh requested of me to you know to, to try to f figure out if they are to one if they can reapply and i told them that i don't believe that you can reapply for the same exact um no they can't no yes with, with the same exact application so you would have to modify it right um, so then they have decided that they will remove their fence but however they 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 want to keep the um, i guess they still want to have the additional parking spaces in the front However, if they remove their fence, they're asking if that's a material change. Um, I um, wanted to bring that to the, the commission for you guys to basically decide whether or not that would be a material of enough change for him to uh, reapply for the additional parking spaces. Yeah, I, I couldn't get in that day, but so my question is, what was the, the reason for the denial? Was, was it the fence? So uh, Commissioner McFarland stated that, um, uh, again, I can't state yeah. exactly what he said, but um, by moving the fence forward to the um, uh, public sidewalk or closer to the public sidewalk, that would alter the street vista. Okay. So I don't know if uh, Commissioner McFarland- hey, I, I, I read the, I read the regulations in that neighborhood. I read them many times. And there's a lot of interpretation on the fence. So when you think of something like that, um, you have to make that interpretation. And to me, if you have a fence that's already there and they want to replace it and put it exactly where it is, well, you know, it's in there. That's different. You know, and you take those on a case by case difference. If there's a fence that's already there and they want to replace it with something that's more historically appropriate. Well, you know, that that would be something I'd be in favor of because you take it by a case, a case, um, you know, if they want to take a fence and they want to move it back towards the house more and it's been there, the fence has been there, you know, that would be something that I would be inclined to interpret as uh, 
beneficial to the street system. But when you take the fence that's there already out of the guidelines and then want to push it closer to the street, well, I can't in good conscience vote for that. So that was my yeah. hiccup. So if it was reapplied um, with the fence out of there, I would be more inclined to vote in favor. I see. Okay. The, I mean, the, the, the question is, is he, is this going to be a different application or just a kind of the same application, just, you know, twist it around a little bit. Uh, that's kind of, I think what you're after Alvin, right? This is what we have to decide. Yeah. So it's either, um, you guys <laughs> allow him to reapply with that material change, or then he, he would then move forward with, uh, you know, an appeal or so. You know, it, it sort of seems to me, I, I wasn't at the meeting, so I didn't know all the exchange, but from this outside perspective, it seems to me that what they're saying, no different than if we were right in the middle of the meeting, they're negotiating, but okay, we don't need the fence. That's right, but we voted it down, so that's right, the problem but, is we had a vote. Right, but what I'm saying, if they're reapplying, it is significantly different because the, the item that was the problem is what they're planning to okay. remove. Okay. That's what I think. All right. Well, that's that's what we're looking for, though. That's whether we, we feel we can they can do that. We under the was there any other problem other than the fence, the parking and the front? Really I mean, well, from from the neighborhood standpoint, we got letters from the Forest Park Civic Association, concerned citizens um, of Springfield, and then also I think there was a resident of the uh, uh, one of the condo residents who who was uh, against the uh, the petition so, right um, one of the questions i would probably ask is is it parking for a van is it parking for a truck you know well, what, what is it well, well, parking is parking unless it's designated handicapped it's parking so, uh, so, so the building is um it's it's i think about 50 um residential units so, somewhere there about 40 to 50 units um but they have a, a, a storefront in the, in the front of the property that um, I believe was uh, previously a lawyer's office, but uh, they have since moved out. And so they're looking to get another tenant in there. And I, I don't know if it's the request of the tenant that they wanted these additional parking spaces, uh, but for whatever the reason is, they, they wanted additional parking spaces for that commercial use. Okay. Well, sometimes the zoning will require additional parking if you add that mixed use. Yep, that's well, that's our that the mixed use has always been there, but um, you know their their presentation at the last meeting was was um, certainly interesting enough uh, because there are there's other parking you know there's several other businesses right there that have similar parking, but that 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 I, that's the kind yeah, that's not really what we're, we're yeah after, adjudicating we're right now. This, is this going to be, can we send, can they send this to us? Would we consider it a new application? So, I mean, we should probably have a motion on it. Does somebody like to make the motion on it? And I guess the motion would be to whether or not to allow um, the, the um, a new application with the removal of the fence. Well, it's, it's, we don't need a motion for that because if it's a new application that's different enough, I just understand why they're asking. If they make this change, are we going to say, hey, that's the same thing and you got to go to the court no matter what? Well, who, we who generally makes that decision? Alvin, is that you that usually makes a decision when people come to you and they're filling out a form? Have you ever had a situation where you're like, well, we just did this two months yeah. ago and said no? Are you the one who makes the decision? What, what have you been thinking prior to this if this situation had occurred that someone whose petition had been rejected had reapplied, what criteria would you use? And, and would you pass that on to Vinny, to, to all of us? I'm just wondering if there's ever been a protocol to cover this before. So I've never really, in it, I've been with the city 13 years now, I've not had this come up where someone wanted to, to appeal. Um, so I've kind of gone back and forth with attorney Shuchuk as to what the protocol is, what the procedures uh, should be. Um, I also spoke with Shannon Walsh from PVPC just to kind of get her, uh, she's a historic pl uh, planner over there, um, to, to kind of pick her brain as to 
who should make this decision. She told me to basically bring it to the commission, so that's why it's on the agenda. Well, I don't, I don't. Well, we have to, if we're meeting, we, we still have the right to say this is not different at the meeting. <clears throat> yes, right? we do. Right, we do. Yeah. I agree. I just, uh, I, but why do, I would like to have, you know, so, so it sounds rather to me like, like if, they're, if they're taking offense out, that sounds to me a sufficiently different application. Yeah, I'm, I would be okay with that. So what, I'm sorry, not so, to uh, break it up. Uh, um, so what I'm hearing is that you guys, instead of taking a vote as to whether or not they should can or, or cannot come back, um, if, if you're saying that if they just put in an application at the, at the meeting, then you'll decide whether or not the application is valid. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay. And, uh, Attorney Shuchuk, jump in if we're... Remember oh, no, I, just, I, I was, it's, am I on mute? Or... No, I got no, you. Here, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I, 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 I agree. I, 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 I definitely agree with, with, with um, the state. I actually think it would be a different application without the defense, but I wanted you, you guys to kind of have that, come to that agreement. By okay. yourselves, I guess. Well, I guess we just um, did that. So Alvin can tell them to put in a new application. Re remember, the fence is a physical object. Right. That's yeah. something we're going to see between the streetscape and the car and the building. So it's, a, it's significant because it's gone. Or if, if that's what they say, if that's what they're offering. I don't know. Well, we won't know until we, we won't know until we see it. All right. Um, all right. I, think we, I don't think we have to take a vote on anything here. They can just submit an application, new application, mm -hmm. and um, and if there's any anything else before the commission tonight, it, it, oh, that's it. Just one last thing, maybe Robert can see if it makes sense. If we still turn it down, they still have the right to go to what was it Superior Court? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be in Superior Court if they. Uh, <laughs> but we <laughs> haven't we haven't short circuited so. by ask by having them come back. We haven't short circuited their rights. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I no, I don't know. Guess so. No, I'm good with that part. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> There's a motion. A second. <laughs> a second. Attorney sorry. I'm sorry I was late. I took the Moderna shot number two yesterday. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I, I took a, a Pfizer two it. yesterday. Did you? I'm feeling it. If, if Alvin so. didn't call me up, I think I would have been out like a light. <laughs> uh, thank you, Alvin. Hey, no Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Stephen, very nice to see you. I appreciate hey, it. And, when you uh, need me, I'll be here. Right. Everybody, have a great, have a great night. See you. <laughs> Later, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good night. Take care.